Lords of the Fallen? Didn't that one come out already? Well, a game with that name certainly did come out in 2014, but this brand new one is different. It's a spiritual successor to the 2014 game, but also a full reboot with the same name. Don't worry, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about Lords of the Fallen 2023. Alright, let's start with the game's plot. 1000 years ago, there was an evil demon god named Ardir. Humanity banded together and after much war and strife, they finally defeated him. Only, it's pretty tough to slay a god and they don't typically stay dead forever. Despite man keeping guard over his remains for a millennium, he's now threatening to return. Already, his influence is spreading and corrupting the world, and it's up to you, as a Dark Crusader, to restore radiance to the holy beacons of the Sentinels and prevent him from coming back. Lords of the Fallen takes place in the land of Mornstead, which, like its name suggests, is really going through it thanks to Ardia's meddling. If you played the 2014 Lords of the Fallen, the 2023 spiritual successor promises to be five times bigger, and the land of Mornstead is packed with different regions and biomes, from terrifying mines and burning cities to wintry forests packed with dangers. But don't worry about getting lost, your trusty journal will help keep you on the right path. The game isn't content with being set in just one world, it's actually set in two parallel worlds. Axiom, the world of the living, and Umbral, the world of the dead. Each has their own unique enemies to fight, characters to meet, and secrets to find. If you find yourself stuck in one world, the answer to overcoming the challenge might just be in the other. If you played the medium from a couple of years ago, that's kind of the gist. There are multiple ways to traverse the two worlds, but the one you'll likely use the most, whether you want to or not, is by dying. If you die in Axiom, you'll awaken in Umbral, giving you a second life, but admittedly, one in an absolute hellscape. Oh, and the longer you spend there, the more terrifying monsters will come after you. Very chill. You can also sacrifice one of your lives by performing the Umbral Rift to go from Axiom to Umbral. Early on in the game, you're bequeathed with the Umbral Lamp, a powerful tool that connects the two worlds. The Umbral Lamp has multiple uses. It lets you peek between the two worlds to take a look and see what's happening on the other side. Beware though, doing this tells nearby enemies where you are, and they might not take too kindly to peeping toms. When in Umbral, you can use the lamp to manipulate the environment, so if you find yourself looking at a treasure and longing for a way to get close to it, give the lamp a try. Which brings us neatly onto gameplay, because you can also use the lamp in combat to rend an enemy's soul from their body, allowing you to deliver a powerful high damage attack. There are nine character classes to choose from when you start the game, featuring pretty standard picks like a Hallowed Knight, who's all about sword and board, a Pyromancer class called the Pirate Cultist, and of course, everyone's favorite, a Sneaky Ranger class too. Despite picking a specific class at the start, you can upgrade and level up your character to match the playstyle you want to roll with. Compared to the original game, 2023's Lords of the Fallen is a lot more flexible, especially in combat. Now, the combat in the 2014 game got a lot of flack for being very, very, very slow. The developers seem to have taken that to heart and are promising 2023's Lords of the Fallen to be a lot quicker, but no less deep and tactical. Throughout the game, there are hundreds of weapons to try out, dozens of armor sets to try on, and a bunch of spells to wield. In fact, in combat, you can map four additional magic or ranged skills beyond your primary weapon, so you can tackle enemies with everything you've got. There are three different kinds of magic to try out, Radiant, Umbral, and Rogar, and you might need to give each a go, because the game also has huge, multi-phase boss battles to keep you on your toes. If all this sounds relentless and you're looking for some respite, well, there's good news and bad news there. In the world, there are permanent vestiges where you can level up and rest, so they kind of act like bonfires in Dark Souls. And hey, aren't you proud I made it this far without a Souls reference? If you're in the middle of a big run and there are no breaks in sight, you can also make one yourself at a vestige seedling. But doing so costs an awful lot of your resources, and you can only have one active at a time. Lords of the Fallen is being developed in Unreal Engine 5, using the engine's character tools to make fully customizable player characters, have everything covered in beautiful high-resolution textures, and will take advantage of the new Lumen Global Illumination tools to make that lighting pop, which will come in handy when you're nipping between those two worlds. 
Lords of the Fallen is apparently going to take you around 30 hours to complete, but if you want more, there's a new game plus mode to get stuck into. If you want to tackle all the horrors that the realms of Axiom and Umbral throw at you alone, you're more than welcome to do so. But Lords of the Fallen does let you play with a pal or a stranger if you want to adventure together. You can summon a friend to join you in your journey at Vestiges, but beware, you can also be invaded by other players in doing so. Or if you don't want to deal with real life companions, you can also rely on in-game NPCs to lend a helping hand too. Now, like I said at the start of this video, a game called Lords of the Fallen came out in 2014, and it's been a long and rocky road to the sequel. Lords of the Fallen 2 was announced back in 2014, and it was revealed that the original co-developer Deck 13 wouldn't be back for that game. In 2018, it was announced that Defiant Studios would be taking over development and starting again from scratch, which it did for a year before that was scrapped, and a new studio named Hexworks was founded to tackle the project. The Lords of the Fallen was revealed in 2022. Yes, there was another the in the title originally, and in March 2023, it was rebranded as just Lords of the Fallen. Lords of the Fallen will release on Friday, October 13th on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S, and PC via both Steam and the Epic Games Store. There are three versions of the game to choose from. The standard edition comes with a copy of the game, and if you pre-order, you get three Precious Metals Armor Tinked Packs, which can be used to customize your wearable items, and three Starting Boost Packs full of XP, MP, and HP items to help you survive the horrors that will be thrown your way. The standard edition is $60 on PC and $70 on PlayStation and Xbox. You can get this edition both digitally and physically. Next up is the Deluxe Edition, which goes for $80 on PlayStation and Xbox and $70 on PC. You get everything in the Standard Edition as well as a new starting class, the Dark Crusader, and their matching kit, which includes a longsword, holy light explosives, and paladin's pendant. The Deluxe Edition also includes a digital art book and soundtrack, and a 3D model viewer. It's available both digitally and physically. And finally, available in physical format only is the big old collector's edition. Coming in at $250, this GameStop exclusive is only available for the Xbox and PlayStation gamers. Sorry, PC pals. It includes all the previous items from the other editions, but also comes with a display case, poster, art cards, and 19 centimeters of the Dark Crusader. That is, a 19 centimeter tall figure. So that's everything you need to know about Lords of the Fallen. If you can't wait until the 13th, we've got a hands-on preview right here on the channel you can check out, and we'll have more videos coming when the game launches, including our review. Subscribe so you don't miss out, and thanks for watching.